Hello everyone, I welcome you all to a new video, in this video, we are going to tackle an easy box from Vulnhub. If you're not familiar with Vulnhub, then watch my previous videos. I have an isolated network created with a Kali box and the target on it. The box I will be writing up is called Jangao 1.0.1. From here download the OVA mirror file. The settings up are quite easy, and it is similar to the past videos. Open Virtual Box. Now click on Import, and browse the file from the download directory. Now, check the network adapter, if it is set to host only adapter, or not. Once you are done with the settings up, Let's start the instance VMs. The instance is ready, and we are going for the enumeration phase. Enumeration. Now, switch to Kali Linux. Next, we are going to identify the IP address with the help of NetDiscover. Open a terminal and type netdiscover-ieth1. We have discovered the target IP address that is 192.168.56.118. Let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open, which is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous nmap tool, where hyphen sc is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts. Hyphen sv enables version detection, which will detect what versions are running on what port. From the output, we have spotted that we have ports 21 and port 80 open. Port 21 TCP running an FTP service, which means that if you have a valid credential, then it will be easy to gain login access to the server. Port 80 TCP running an HTTP service, which indicates that there is some vulnerable website being hosted. To look at the contents ourselves, we can open a web browser of our choice and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. The URL redirects us to a broken link page. We found that directory listing is enabled on the target machine. We found one folder named site in the current directory. Foothold Following the previously shown link brought us to this grayscale site. Looking around, there doesn't seem to be anything too interesting except for the busker page found in the top right. That's interesting, it looks like it's performing some kind of post request. It seems like, this website is vulnerable to local file inclusion. You can learn more about local file inclusion from this video, click the i button now. I wonder what busker means. The busker seems to be like a Spanish word. If you translate it using Google Translate on the web, the result shows us like this. It means we can search for anything from here. Let's see what can we do with this LFI vulnerability. Let's search for the ls command to list the files and directories. For a better view, switch to view page source by right click on the mouse. Let me search again the ls-al command to list all hidden files. From the output, we have spotted a WordPress directory existing within it. After visiting the WordPress page, we notice that this WordPress is in a broken state. This may be happening because of WordPress may not be able to access the database, or maybe the WordPress database may be deleted. Let's switch back to the Busker tab and find out if there are any other files may be existing or not, which may help us to gain an FTP connection. Switch to the Busker tab and run ls-al and specify the file name. 
I quickly notice that there's a config.php file that seems to be contained something else. Open the file using the cat command and read the contents within it. From the output, we have noticed a username and a password. Copy them to a text editor. Let's try to attempt an FTP connection with the help of the username and password. I quickly discover that the login failed. This means that WordPress is getting trouble while accessing the database. Let me print the current working directory path. Let me list all hidden files and directories that can be within slash var slash www slash html. I notice that there's a dot backup file that seems to be contained backup database credentials. Read the file using the cat command. Let's again attempt to gain access to the server using the FTP client tool. We got a successful message. You can find out the user flag from the Jangao01 directory. Execute ls to list the files and directories. You can read the file by downloading it from the FTP server using the git command. Once you download that file, you can read it using the cat command. Now, we need to find a way to escalate our privileges from the user Jangao01 to the super admin role. One way to try this is by checking if a reverse shell connection is possible or not. Let's examine the possible methods one by one. Method 1. A reverse shell connection is possible if we push a PHP reverse shell file to the server and execute it. We can chain this with the LFI vulnerability that we have already identified. In order to upload the malicious PHP code to the target system that will be responsible for returning a reverse shell to us. We will then access this PHP file through the LFI and the web server will execute the PHP code. We can either create our own PHP code or use one of the many available PHP reverse shells that can be found online through a Google search. Copy this PHP code to the nano text editor so that we have to create a test.php file using the nano text editor. Paste the code by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus V. Now, modify the code so it can suit our needs. We are going to change the listening host IP and the listening port variables to match our settings, and then we will attempt to upload the file. But the upload can't possible, as the Jangao01 user doesn't have any permission to modify the web directories. Method 2, a reverse connection can also be possible with the netcat command. We have discussed this from this in this video, if you have time, then watch it by clicking the i button. Type netcat, specify the target IP, and specify the FTP service port. Input the username and password. But the reverse shell connection is also not possible with this. Method 3, there is a method that can give us a reverse shell connection. You find this code by searching on Google. Modify this code IP address and port.
Before running this command, you have turned on the netcat listener on the port that you mentioned. Let's try again with the TTY bash shell script. Take a look closer at the URL bar at the top of the window. When we execute the script it automatically translates the bash script to a string. There is a way to encode the bash script to an encoded URL string. Visit the URL encoder by searching on Google. Load this code to the busker. On executing this payload, our netcat listener has caught a reverse shell connection. We got the foothold. The received shell is not fully interactive, however, we can make it a bit better by using Python 3. Now set the term environment variable. Finally, we got the fully interactive shell now. Switch the user to jangao01 using the sudo su command and paste the password. Privilege escalation. The next step is escalating to the root user in order to gain the highest privileges on the system. Switch to back the user jangao01 directory and list out all hidden files and directories that we have not listed before. For privilege escalation, we are going to use a tool called linpeas, which can automate a big part of the enumeration process in the target system. Visit the GitHub link and download the linpeas.sh file. You can find it in the release section. Now, we have to transfer it to our target system by using the FTP service. On the target machine, you can verify by listing the files and directories. As you can see, this file contains only read and write permission, but does not have any execution permission. Now execute it. LinPs is a script that searches for possible paths to escalate privileges on Linux. After analyzing the output, we found a piece of important information that our target is vulnerable to these exploits. Let's try to exploit the eBPF verifier. You can find out the script from the exploit DB database. Click here to download this file. Now, Upload this file to the server using the FTP service. Now compile the program to compile the exploit using GCC command line utility. On execution, it creates a new file in the current directory. Now execute the output file. On successful execution, we can see that the kernel exploit grants us root. You can find the root flag to complete the challenge. Congratulations on the completion of capturing both flags. If you have any doubts or queries then write me a comment in my comment section.